Um, welcome to our next interview. Um, I'm very excited today to have Ross Charles. A lot of you know him. Um, he's one of South Africa's leading uh, advertising guys. Uh, so he's won so many awards and done great stuff in, in the advertising world. So yeah, we've got him here and we're not going to waste too much time and get straight into it and start chatting to Ross. So Ross, how's it been moving to the other side of the pond, as they say? <laughs> ah, it's a totally different world. <laughs> it, in one hand and on the other hand, it's the same. I mean, you know, if you think we were raised on American TV, and I live in a very suburban area in a university town. So it's kind of, it's not New York. Um, but yeah, it's a different thing. You know, the Americans are very guarded. They're nice, but they don't share their emotions as much as South Africans do. I think we wear our hearts and our sleeves much more. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, is there anything that really struck you that since you've been there, that's different from here? Um, yeah, I think this thing about if you poor, it's kind of your fault. Wow. Which we have a totally different concept of poverty. Partly as white people, we kind of take on the guilt of the past. And, you know, in every way we're trying to help people. Yeah, it's, it, it definitely is this weird thing of, you know, if you put, hey, it's your your fault. You you just didn't work hard enough. So you had the opportunity and you didn't take it. Yeah, that kind of thing. You know, because America's built on this. There's opportunity, and the, you know, if you work hard, you'll succeed. That permeates. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, the other thing, I, I, I get they've actually, strangely enough, very um, law-abiding. Oh, really? We, we've, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, follow the rules, hey. I mean, follow the rules. If I feel a little bit like in Switzerland. So, you know, as a protest, I'll jaywalk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know that's like I've been in Europe for a while and it drove me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Ross, you've, you've had quite a big change. I mean, you've been, uh, you know, I've worked with you for many years and, um, and you know, being in the, the advertising side, you've now made a complete change over to the academic side. Um, how's that been? Yes. Um, it was a shock, a, a, a massive shock. I think the, the, the biggest parts that were the shock was, as an ad agency, you're totally at the mercy of the client. You know, you go in, you don't know how your day is going to be. Uh, you don't know what, where the client's going to find up, cancel the shoot, or increase the budget, or halve the budget. You, 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 you're at their mercy. And also, you get their brief. So they come along and they go, oh, you know, we've got a container load of left feet shoes. What are we going to do? Now, suddenly, I go into a world where um, uh, I know on a Tuesday at 2 o'clock what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> so it's from, from chaos to order. The second thing is I've become the client because I'm now telling them, here's the brief, here's the such and such. Um, so the, the, I think that was the biggest thing. The other thing is, as a though I'm in a department, we really just individuals. I hardly ever see my other professors. Doors are closed. We're in the classroom. So actually, the people, my co-workers are the students. Um, and if I want something done, if I want a poster printed, I was in an ad agency. I'd just go to the production department and say, "Hey, have this printed for me." I'd go to Photoshop retouching said just do this for me <laughs> i have to do everything myself you gotta do it yourself <laughs> <laughs> which is is yeah a bit of a shock so i'm slowly learning <laughs> computer programs and so on i think i think in a way though you you must have um gathered a lot of experience because if i think back you know your jupiter drawing room days and even before that when i worked with you at ynr and you know you and especially at jupiter you took on a lot of young guys and you yeah you, you, you really, really built them up. I mean, there's some, the guys are flying now. There's some, some art directors that, and creative directors that have worked with you that are, are really doing very well. Uh, I totally. A lot of that goes. And how do you get that out of the kids at your school or the young art directors? What is it that, that, that gets them to that? Because you don't always see that. You don't always see the best being brought out of people. Yeah. You know, so certain, certainly there's, 
there's always the two methods of being a creative director. And one, so the one route is the creative director who kind of goes, bah, wow, well, that's shit, and throws their work out the window. Mm. Which is it's fun, but, but what you do is you leave people not knowing what to do. And I think I was never like that. I was always, I looked for the idea within the idea. So if people stuck up 10 ideas, somewhere in there was the idea. And I, oh, okay, but what if we do this and then we build it from there? So I think that that con concept, sorry, the cat's walking all over me. It as well. um, that concept of finding the idea and building it would ins show, uh, give esteem and the idea that, hey, I can do this, you know. And look, it's, it's a difficult thing because a, a Graham Lang, was whether I was there or not, he was going to succeed. Gra Graham Lang's got the juice to, to get to the top, and he's got to the top. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. But, but it's finding the next level down and trying to, trying to open their potential. And I think that's what I carry into the classroom. So they come with their ideas, and then I'll go, oh, that's awesome. And I think this is, because in theory, education, you should be, they should discover themselves, but there's no time. So I help them. So they, they come up with an idea and then I go, okay, awesome. This is cool. But do it like this, do it like this. Think of this, look at these references and so on. So I do, I do play a teacher and a creative director at the same time. But I think the key is to find the potential in, in, in every idea. And in finding the potential in the idea, you find the potential in the person. Some people are hopeless. So every class, 10%, oh, it doesn't matter what you do. Yeah. And whether it's attitude or lack of self-belief, or actually they just can't come up with ideas. And I think it's the same with business. I mean, I'm, you've de dealt with people and you think, absolutely, you know, it's impossible. How am I going to? But it's, it's a small percentage. And the, the, the rest of the spectrum, there's 10% that are flyers and they just win anyway. But it's that bulk in the middle that, We've got to try and make something with why i love young people i think is the optimism the anything's possible the not tainted with um with with uh, experience but also i guess i never liked the gunslingers you know those guys they've got three awards under their belt and they think they're the business and it's just that was never the culture of our agency. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah it's, it's interesting because you know, I, we had a lot of students who came through my studios. And, you know, we, we've had lots and we, you know, I lectured for a while as well at the Cape Town School of Photography. And I, I've done a, done a lot of things. And how, how prepared are your students who are coming out there for the real world? And, and where, where do you think they should be? Because I think sometimes these guys think, you know, within two years, they're going to be a career director. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, strangely enough, um, so our, uh, Michigan's Midwest, and the Midwestern mindset actually is a lot more calm. It's not New York, so they don't have that, ah, I'm going to conquer the world. They, it's, it's kind of, if anything, it's the opposite. If anything, I've got to kind of try and say, hey, this is possible. This is, you can do something. So now preparing them for the real world, oof, that's a, that's a hard thing. Um, I have this, and it's an unpopular notion, but that is, so when we hire, when agencies hire, they hire people with a mindset is, oh, we want the next, we want the next amazing person. Yet actually, so much of the work any agency does is slog work, mm. okay? Really, I mean, I just, it do, so it dawned on me when we had the Vintook account and I saw this young junior art director doing a price poster. And I mean, all they had to do was take the poster, change the, and I thought, wow, you know, we looked at that porty and, all, and agonized over it and here he's doing a fucking price poster. <laughs> so so, <laughs> so the, the, the thought is, is that first of all, we need to separate eagles from chickens because there's a lot of chicken work out there and there's eagles. So 
I try and temper them as to say, yeah, you know, look at this kind of, look at these kind of agencies or go work here. So I try and temper that mindset. And then the eagle one, I go, okay, you know, go to New York, go to San Francisco, go. So th that's the thing. The second thing is on preparing them for the world. Um, I, I don't think, it, I just remember the scene in Band of Brothers where they're training and they're training and they're training and they're training. And then when they go to battle and the bullets start flying, everybody acts differently. And yeah. some people rise and some people collapse. So I think that's the truth is that uh, I try and teach critical thinking, i.e. problem solving, and I teach process. So I'm big, big, big on process. Yeah. So, try, you know, thinking a thing through, preparing, trying to work out what if it goes wrong, all that kind of stuff. Because to me, that's the best way they can, they can be prepared. But in truth, these, these kids, they soft. Eh? That's why there's massive depression at the moment, because they don't know how to deal with this COVID stuff. You know, we, would, we went to the we, army. We were a little bit harder, I think, in South Africa. We were, hard. We we're in Africa. It's not for sissy. You know, we, we used to trauma yeah. and not used to trauma here. Yeah, you know, you but, yourself. Yeah. But so the one school of thought is, well, I must be mean to them. I must tell them it's shit and all that. Uh, that doesn't work. Mm. You, when, when I give critique, I have to set lots of context so they understand. You know, the, the thing is, I'm teaching in a university, which is different from red and yellow, where they're focused, where they're working with a copywriter and they're working for two weeks on one project. Yeah. I've got students who leave my class and then go to a media class or then go to statistics or theology or, you know, whatever philosophy. And so your little project is just one of, of many. Um, they haven't got time. We haven't got time to sit and work stuff through, which is why I just teach process. Yeah. And, you know, it's amazing because uh, uh, 30 years, 36 years experience in advertising, but everything was gut feel and running. Now for the last four years, I've had to take that and put it into theory, into, into some form of structure. And I wish actually I had that structure, that understanding of the structure when I was a creative director. Because uh, it just, it, it makes you have to think about how you package things. I'll email me, uh, email me your, your address and I'll send you my process book. Oh. And I wish I had done that. <laughs> yeah. And you can share it with your friends if you want to, you know, with, with the team. Um, it would be great. I wish I had that way of approaching clients because too often we approach clients very seat of the pants. Yeah. Everything was very seat of the pants rather than laying. And, and remember, as an agency, we were very structured because of Joanne. Joanne, was, uh, Joanne Thomas was fucking amazing in structure and the design area and whatever. But even then, we were very loose. Yeah. And now that I've had to put structure of thought and process, fuck, I wish I had that. Now I could go back in time and we'd sell more work. Yeah. And, and just the, you know, with that whole structure, there's been such a change. I and mean, if I think of my first days when I actually went and worked in an ad agency before I became a photographer for a short while and realized photography was more to my leaning than the, the ad world. But it is, if I just think of, you know, your letter set guy and your guy sitting on the table with a, a, a scalpel cutting out type and setting type and then to now where things are just so different. And, you know, we're chatting across the world on, on a Zoom conference here. Um, how, yeah. how easy is that to manage? That, that, um, because the kids obviously are more up to date than possibly you are. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, they are in some ways, you know, that was a big shock. I thought coming here to America, that every American kid by the age of 15 had uploaded stuff onto YouTube. Some of them are useless at <laughs> computers. So I'm telling them, I'm teaching, it's mad. But oh. I think the big shift is, you're quite right, you know, when I was an art director, art director did art direction, copywriter did copywriting, designer did design. 
that kind of world is different. And, and now I merge it, that actually the modern creative is a, a, a art director, designer, copywriter. You, you kind of got to understand a little bit of everything. I mean, you as a photographer, you also need to know retouching. You also need to know actually visualization and, you know, well, we, to video, you name it. I mean, well, retouching has always been one of my things, but but now we're being asked more and more to video while we while we're shooting, and it's yeah, it's quite difficult. Correct. Yeah. So so definitely, I teach you got to be all things, which is why we get back to process of critical thinking, mm -hmm. because if you if you focus on process, that'll help you deal with whatever the problem is. Which is most should be what we need at the moment, because you know. You know, if I look at advertising and, and something that's always struck me and it, it hits us hard on the photography side and it hits the agencies, you know, if I think of you guys who had a huge retail account and from what I can see, somebody in management in the company decided to change everything and caused huge disruption in, in your guys' um, business. And we have often where an art director will leave and suddenly, wow, you know, a new person comes in and you lose that work. And, you know, how does one cope with it? And especially now in COVID-19, I mean, how, how, do, how in the advertising industry did you guys cope with that situation? Well, we didn't. I mean, that's the truth. You know, when Willie's went in-house, it was our biggest client. Hmm. And you build your agency to service that. And now suddenly one of the legs, and it's the biggest leg of a table, is gone. Um, and the problem is, is, uh, you know, our, our structure, it hurt us. It, it, it hurt us. It, you can't, I don't know. You, you know, I look back and I, if you think that at a high point, so when we had the Woolworths Club, we're 150 people. Yeah. It's a big, it was a big agency. And now, 17, you know, 18. Um, and I think if you take that, uh, and and various personal stuff that went on in in the agencies, people getting sick, mm. divorces, so on. Mm. It was all just all all the wrong stuff at the wrong time. You see, when I look at our success, I th attribute our success to a couple of things. One is we had a weird name, you know, <laughs> Jupiter, crazy name. Mm. So our brand and 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 then the sort of image of Graham Warsop, so our image was amazing, very powerful. We had great energy and optimism. I mean, the, the Kev, Joe, and, my, and myself, great energy, perfect mix. And then we just luckily, and I use that word bold, luckily hired some amazing people. You know, the Gab Levinsons, the PJs, the Ahmeds, the, the, the um, uh, Graham Langs. Uh, and, and there was this amazing stuff. So we had a lot of luck. Plus we went for retail rather than, you know, which suited us. We were very bold. I think that's, our balls were huge. We took risks. Um, and then the luck turned against us. <laughs> you know, uh, as I said, sicknesses and all sorts of things. But, but, uh, our Jupiter name and image was a blessing in the beginning and then it became a curse because the curse became, oh, we're this colonial agency, even though actually Jupiter was one of the first agencies to be over 50% non-white. Yeah, I know. I'm very surprised that people thought that because, I mean, I worked a lot with PJ and you know, a lot of guys there. That definitely but do you remember this is Joburg? So, so the Joburg thing just, you know. Selling out to WPP was a fuck. Yeah. Not WPP. No, they, they never interfered. It was just actually money got involved. Yeah. And when money got involved, it just created crap. Yeah. The, reason, the reason why I actually asked that question was um, because just bring us back to the situation we're in now, where yeah. a lot of guys, I mean, I'm sure agencies are going to have to be retrenching a lot of people just purely because yeah. you know, of the times. And I mean, I know... Um, on some of the brands that I work with that, that you worked on as well, that they've, they've just cut their, their catalogs. And, you know, before we went into lockdown, what do you think? You suddenly had seven, eight days of work just yeah. was gone um, at the last minute. And, you know, there's no, and, and 
so there's, and especially amongst the creatives, I'm just hearing so much, um, people are trying, but there's a lot of negativity out there and worry and, you know, are we going to get our jobs back? How are we going to do this understandably? And, and I just think, you know, what we can give to them to, to say, look, guys, it's actually, we've got to think differently and do things differently. So, yeah. so, so I, I didn't answer your question. So I run a class called uh, the portfolio class and it's, it's the final semester and they have to do a portfolio. And what I say to them is your website is the most important thing because that website is the modern business card and it should be updated and it should be curated and it should be perfect. So even I, I have a full-time job, but I've got a website. Because who knows? And in that website, I've tried to give the best picture of who I am. So on the one hand is you need the website, especially as the world's going to go more freelance. So, so really, it's just less and less agencies going to hire, hire. They're going to use freelance. So actually, for freelance, you need, which you are, you know, you need that freaking awesome portfolio. Um, and I have a whole lot of rules as to how to make that portfolio great. And then you've got to promote it. So in fact, what you're doing with this is a great way to promote that. But somehow you've got to link that to Malcolm Day photography. Yeah. So, so, so to keep top of mind. So great portfolio, top of mind. Great portfolio, top of mind. Great portfolio, top of mind. And, and I think, you know, also it's been quite interesting. I, I had a very good chat to, and I don't know if you've seen the video with uh, a business that uh, Daryl Clayton, that uh, the video went up last night. And, and he's talking about, you know, major corporations changing a lot of what they do. They, 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 this whole new way of working, you know, they're all working on online at the moment from their home. Right? And, and things, you know, he's saying that once, once you've got used to that, you're going to start working like that. And again, people are going to start losing their jobs through not needing. You don't need suddenly a secretary because you're sitting at home. Um, no, well, also, you, uh, businesses don't need big space. Yeah. So we can cut, cut our rentals, you know. Yeah. So, no, it's, it's huge. What makes it, what's different in America to South Africa is, first of all, this is an online culture. Jesus, because, because your package doesn't get stolen. Uh, people buy everything online. So retail here, shopping centers, disaster, disaster. But in the agency world, what's huge here is, is in-house. Almost every major corporate has an in-house agency. Of course, they're just doing social media. They're doing the below the line stuff, but that is huge. Um, and I really think that's, that's the, the sweet spot. So you kind of got to go, I'm going to go talk to the checkers guys. I'm going to go talk to Sunlum. I'm going to talk to their internal agencies. I'm going to talk to, and again, that's where the website's important. Yeah. So I think the, the days of courting the agencies, which isn't, you still got to do, but I, I really believe it's client orientated. How do you find, uh, just sort of going off the track a little bit now, but it's just something personally that I've found is, when, when companies go in-house, the yes. one side that, they, that I find they're lacking is that they don't have that agency structure in, from the career director down. So often it's, an, it's not employed like an agency would play. We need designers, so they employ designers. And they yeah. think that designers will do what a creative director or a yeah, sure. person like yourself will do. Yeah, but in America, yeah, that's taken seriously. So in, 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 a, in a, an in-house agency will be creative directors. That, that is... Um, so, so they've taken many top quality people and then put them in, in house in, in those positions. Yeah, yeah. That, that's really interesting. And then, you know, one of the things that, that I've seen, and I've, I've actually come across a couple of times now where um, a designer who's a freelancer will come to me and say, well, look, you know, I'm wanting to get this particular client come with me and we'll go as a team to get it and we'll bring a writer in as well and a social media person as well and we'll create a team just yeah. for this particular job and yeah. then maybe they'll choose a different photographer and a different writer for another particular client or I'll do it. Do you think that's also something in the future that... 100%. Absolutely. Um, fluid. It's organic. It's fluid. I think that those old days of I work for an agency or I work for a business and I need my uh, health insurance and you know my, 
sort out that, that stuff's going. Yeah. It's going. No, look, it's in, and, and do you think this whole period of this COVID-19 is going to shift a lot just in the short time in the way people think? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I think, look, it's so hard. <laughs> I must first do, put a disclaimer here. Everything I've ever predicted has never come true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's not true, Ross. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty that you've got right. <laughs> but um, I, I, what, I, what we just don't know is the economic, the economic uh, wasteland that we're going to come out to. I know who's going to do brilliantly immediately will be hairdressers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, the hairdressers will be they'll be uh, full i oh, just don't know what the what what will happen mm -hmm. however we live now in a compared to the old uh the great depression we live in a in a world that's highly connected innovative fluid i, I, can't, I can't tell you i'm shutting myself at this point our university the the in new enrollments are still up so we haven't yet felt that, but budget cuts within the university pay slashing, mm. you know, so I may, I may be out of a job, you know, I don't know. Yeah, look, it's very scary times. But, you know, I think the beauty is that you've got this experience now and there's so many opportunities to teach online and to do other things. So if you do, you stack that one can always, and you know, I, I think a lot of people here would jump at the opportunity of having a chance to. The, do it. the only problem with online is, is, is it's uh, seen as free. So to monetize it, it's, it's difficult, you know. Oh, but oh, yeah, sure. So there's quite some quite good things like Teachable and Udemy that are, seem to be, be getting that right. But look, we're just going off, off, off on a bit of a tangent there. But Ross, I think, yeah, look, I, I think that there's some really interesting stuff that you got in there. Just one other question about the, the, the students and the school system, because I'm always quite fascinated. The South Africa almost has a dual school system. And mm -hmm. kids come out of your private schools and then come out of your public schools. And they, they are, there is a huge divide, especially amongst the township schools and what's here. In, in the States, would you say the level of kids that are coming are um, as well educated or on the same level as what we are here? Or are they more advanced in their knowledge of that? Uh, I think I'm constantly shouting at them that they know nothing, you know. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and to me, it's that sort of general education, whether it's music or movies or history or just sense of place. I think it's exacerbated by um, the fact that America's kind of the center of the world, and we weren't. Mm -hmm. I can't comment on on a, on South African education because I, I don't know. I don't know what. A dude coming out of Kai Litcher high, high School knows, but I know that if I think of my daughters who went to Weinberg Girls, they were globally aware, politically aware. Um, you know, they knew their shit, they knew their stuff. So I think, from that context, we we far more globally aware than Americans are. Uh, you, you hear that quite often. And it was quite interesting at the at the Pixel Foundry where you used to every year take on students. And I, I was quite a big advocate of taking on international students because I thought it gave our assistants uh, yeah. a good exposure to what was happening. I, I must say, I was terribly impressed by generally the, the level of um, European, especially we got from Holland and from Switzerland yeah. and from the UK. Uh, we got really good students and I was very impressed with what was coming out of there compared to what yeah. a lot of the schools here were producing. Yeah, I, I, I just, I can't speak for, for New York or San Francisco, which I yeah. think that's a different vibe. Here, you know, I, I, the, 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 the city I'm in is called Lansing. It's, it's a city of um, sort of a mile, uh, an hour and a half out of Detroit. It's in the middle of Michigan. Michigan really is sort of farmland with little towns. So it's very, it's a, it's a different kind of mindset. Nice people, really nice people. Uh, but you, you just don't have that feeling of like they're in touch with what's going on in the world or, you know, and I used to, I, I organized 
a um, I organized an internship in Singapore. They shat themselves. They did not do Singapore. Ah, it's it's mm-hmm. too scary. Um, we organized for some African American students to attend the one show workshop in Cape Town. Okay, mm-hmm. and they 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 said no. Paid free. Really? And they said no. Yeah, it's too scary. It's it's. Wow, it's it's weird how it's quite insular. Um, you know, because I think when I was twenty, if somebody said Singapore, ah, geez, we would have been there like a shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly, absolutely. Well, Ross, yeah, look, I mean, that's really, I mean, it's such great insights that you've got there, and it's wonderful to hear what you're doing, and especially with the students and 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 the kids, and and what's happened over your advertising time. Just one last thing from you is, if there's anything you, you can say to us here out in South Africa, just one sort of message that I can put out to the guys in the, the industry that, you know, that you'd like to say. Uh, before... Sure, and it's, it's there are opportunities. Uh, there are opportunities, you just gotta go find them. Hmm. And if you think like that, you will find them. I think the woe is me, who, if, when we, I've done a lot of pitching and when we've gone in with a positive vibe and the client can sense that confidence, stuff happens. When we're feeling insecure, it doesn't matter how much you do your shwami pitch, mm. the client can sense it. And I think that's the same anywhere. Everybody's looking for hope. And if you can be the guy that can bring hope and bring uh, uh, help, people brands still need help clients still need they need help to sell and if you if that's your language that listen i've got this idea maybe you can they may not use you then but they'll hey that guy she he he came up he showed us how we could do photography differently so for instance I'll, i'll give you an example my belief now is in a world where we don't listen uh we don't read we don't listen either we don't read and we scroll that peripheral vision is important. So what that means is the way we photograph things, you should instantly know what the brand is. So if you could create a look for checkers, let's just say. So as you're scrolling, whether you're gonna shooting a chicken or a frickin' uh, um, uh, homo pack, you instantly go, ah, that's from checkers. Okay, that's what they need. Uh, nobody's reading the message that you've got to get the feeling. So that's a, something that you could build on, go to the client, open the discussion. Why? Because we're going to get more sales. Opportunities are there, but you've got to be the person who can help clients. Well, Russ, I mean, that's really great. And yeah, thanks so much. And then just to all, everybody out there, I mean, that, that was very inspirational and positive. And, you know, as Ross says, there are opportunities for us. There are a lot of opportunities. And we've just got to go and get them. We've got to go and show what we can do and believe in ourselves. And we'll really, we can crack it. I, I think we mustn't let this time get us down too much because we can make it work. And Ross, once again, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks a lot.